Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to take a look at chapters, scenes and events. Now whether you use scenes in your actual book or not, um, using them in Papyrus is a really useful tool. Using chapters, scenes, events and even comments effectively give you really good navigational points within Papyrus. Not only that, the chapters, scenes and events give you the ability to move small portions of text or large portions of a text about within your novel. So they're really good for structuring and creating your book. So let's take a look. Okay, so what I thought I'd start by doing is showing you uh, one of my works in progress with the chapters, uh, scenes and events already in them. So if I highlight uh, the chapter title, you'll see in styles it denotes um, the kind of style it is, which is a chapter heading. If I come down to uh, the body text or the main text, you can see that the style changes. So this is one of the ways you can create a chapter, uh, simply from styles, which I'll show later in the video. This is a scene. Um, and again, it's shown by a clapperboard and you have a scene marker uh, where you can add um, brief descriptions of the scenes and so on. Also, this is an event. And again, like the scene, you can add comments or rather you can add descriptions of what that event is. So this is what it sort of looks like within the main documents. And all of these, including comments, are, can be used to navigate with. So if I open up the navigator and I go to chapter one, you'll see that the, the, the um, document instantly uh, jumps to that chapter. So this point here refers to this point here in the navigator. If I open up each one of these chapters within the navigator, you're going to see more and more things. Now I've turned off some of the navigator ele elements just so that we can look at specifically comments, uh, scenes and events. And if I click on any of these, it will take you through to those portions in the main document. So again, this denotes a chapter, scene, and when I click on either any of these items, it will take you directly to that point in your book. Okay, so that's a brief overview that you can see, but by, you know, uh, using chapter scenes, events, and even comments, they're the building blocks of, of your of your book. So let's jump into the main video. Okay, so we're now in the empty project, and this is how it appears uh, at the moment you create it. It gives you two empty chapters. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove this text in the second chapter. Uh, just so that um, we're working with a single chapter to start with. Okay, and I'll get the cursor in the right place. So, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to create a scene. And that's very easily done. You can do it from a right click within the main document and go scene. Now, I always place a, a scene marker directly after the chapter heading and I'll explain that why uh, why that is uh, a little bit further down the track. I also suggest you use like a small description of the subsequent scene rather than just seeing one or one or two and I'll, I'll, I'll show you that as well. So I'm going to go okay and I'm going to insert some text. I'm just going to paste in some text for now just to simulate me uh, creating that scene. Now the text that I've uh, copied in um, actually has uh, comments already embedded. So you can see those are navigational points as well. So by clicking on any one of these things you can navigate your way through the book. So you don't have to uh, add scenes just from scratch. So in other words, you don't have to add them before you create a scene. You can add them at any point. So let's say with this scene, you think, oh, this scene's a bit long. I'd actually like to break it up a little bit. You can do exactly the same thing. I can go anywhere into any portion of the text and again, do a right click and go scene. Okay. So 
you don't have to create the scenes immediately, but by breaking things up, they're giving you really good navigational points. So even if you don't use scenes in your actual book, using scene breaks within your uh, document as you're working is a great way of navigating your book and moving text around, which I'll show again a bit later. So now I'm going to show you how to create an event. And an event can be created in exactly the same way as a scene. So there's two types of events. There's the key events, which would be something really important, like Grandad died. And then just normal events, which are, you know, I had dinner with Grandad. And exactly the same thing again. You can just right-click anywhere, add an event, and you can put in a description of what that event is. And again, these become clickable in the navigator. So you can navigate through your book using these, these marker points. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a, a chapter. So uh, what I'm going to do first is insert a page break. You don't have to insert page breaks. I just always do it out of, it's just what I do. It just makes life a little bit easier when I'm creating my paperbacks. So you can see the cursor is now down here. So one way of creating a chapter is to go to the styles menu in your top toolbar and simply select chapter title and it will instantly create that chapter and it will be correctly numbered sequentially after your the previous chapter. So again, if I hit enter now, you can see that the style or the formatting has gone back to standard book, which is what you would use for your main text. Again, I'm going to insert a scene. And I'm going to add some text. Now what I'm going to do is show you the other way you can add in a scene where you can add it from the navigator. You could right click here and go new scene after. And what it will do, it will create the new scene marker basically exactly where the cursor is. So I'm going to go new scene after. And it creates that scene break. All you do is remove this text and add in the text that you want. Okay, again, I'm going to insert another page break, which I'll repeat is um, optional. But instead of this time uh, going up to styles to create the chapter, I'm going to right click here and I'm going to select um, new chapter after, which creates that chapter. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just propagate a little bit more text and scenes into this. Then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how you can use these uh, marker points uh, to move the body of uh, the main text around within your novel. OK, so I'm back again. So what I've done, I've just added a little bit more text in and a few more uh, scenes and so on. Now, what you can do if let's say, for instance, you think uh, chapter two should actually be where chapter one is. You can actually move all the text relating to chapter two simply by clicking on it and dragging it to where, for instance, chapter one is. And what that will do, it will automatically move chapter two to where chapter one was and renumber the chapters correctly. You can also do that with scenes. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to demonstrate that here and see here. I've put scene one and two. Papyrus doesn't renumber scenes. So if I drag scene two to where scene one was, you can see it's now ordered incorrectly. But if I do the same thing here, if I go, uh, he moves on and I drag it to here, you can see that it's changed position. But because it's a description, it's still easy for you to know what's going on. This is also why I place uh, scene breaks directly after chapter headings, because if I if you didn't have a scene break directly after the chapter heading, the text in between the chapter heading and the first scene break wouldn't be movable 
because it would be locked to the main chapter. So this means that when I move this back, it moves the whole scene back in the correct place. Do you see what I mean? If, if there wasn't this chapter head, this scene break here, I wouldn't be able to move the text that's in between the chapter heading and the scene. I wouldn't be able to move just that small chunk. So by placing these uh, scene breaks in, it works fine. And you can drag scenes from one chapter to another. So I can drag that scene completely into uh, chapter one so that there's now three scenes within chapter one. So it's a quick and easy way of moving text. OK, and I can just simply drag it back again. And it will move that entire body of text, events, comments and anything else related to that scene or chapter to the place you want it. Now, what I'm going to quickly do as well is I'm going to open up the organizer and I'm going to open up the timeline and that can be done from author. So I'm going to open up the organizer and you can see also that those chapters and scenes are displayed there. And depending on what is turned on, it will show you in the same way as the navigator what can be seen. OK, and the same goes uh, for the timeline. So again, you can either open the timeline from this icon or again, you can go to the author's menu and open timeline. And what you can see is chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, with their scenes below, as well as their events. Okay, so that's, that's chapters and scenes. Okay, so there you have it. That was chapters, scenes and events. Now, I think you'll agree that using those elements, the chapters, scenes and events, as the building blocks of the structure of your book is an extremely useful thing to do. If you didn't structure the, your book in the way I showed you, it would be far harder to navigate through it and also far harder to move text around. So whether you, as I said at the beginning, whether you use scenes or not in your main book, your published book, using them as structure, the structural foundation for your work in progress is a great thing to do. So until next time, see you later.